Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. In this video, I'm going to talk about the biomass distribution on the Earth and what we've done to it, what humans have done to the biomass on the planet. Clearly, there's an inverse relationship between the number of humans on the planet and the number of all other species on the planet. So this article that was in The Guardian just recently talks about humans just being 0.01% of all life, but we've destroyed 83% of wild mammals. This is a landmark groundbreaking assessment of all life on Earth in this study. So we have a surprisingly tiny part of it, 0.01%. You know, what is this number? Well, a percent is 10 to the minus two, right? 0.01 is 10 to the minus 2. So this is 10 to the minus 4. 10 to the minus 4 would be the same as 100 times 10 to the minus 6, or 100 parts per million. So humans are essentially 100 parts per million of all life. Okay, so this is analogous to, you know, the small concentrations of CO2 that are completely changing the chemistry of our atmosphere and oceans, uh, the, the climate, and causing this uh, you know, very rapid climate change and destruction of lots of life on, on the planet. So this uh, article is based on a paper that just came out, which is called The Biomass Distribution of Earth. So I'll be talking about these two things in this, in this video. Got the lights for more contrast. This is just an image showing livestock, a cattle farm in Brazil. 60% of all mammals on Earth are livestock. Okay, so basically, in the grand scheme of life on Earth, we're simultaneously insufficient and utterly dominant. Okay, 7.6 billion people are just this 100 parts per million, 0.01% of all living things, according to the study. Yet we've caused the loss of 83% of all wild mammals, half of plants, um, since the dawn of civilization. Okay, um, so basically what this study does is it estimates the weight of every class of living creature on the planet. Bacteria are a major life form, 13% of everything, but plants dwarf everything else. They represent 82% of all living matter on the plant. All other creatures, from insects to fungi to fish and animals, they make up just 5% of the world's biomass. Now, also, the teeming life in the oceans is only what's left of it. it used to be teeming, now it's less teeming. But that's only just 1% of all biomass. The vast majority of life is land-based and a large chunk, an eighth, is bacteria buried deep beneath the surface, where it will be in deep uh, subterranean aquifers, in deep uh, rock, you know, far below the surface. So the scientist was shocked, okay? There hasn't been a comprehensive, holistic estimate of all the different components of biomass. So this work was published very recently, and here's some of the things that it determined. So here we go. All life on Earth is made up of 82% plants, 13% bacteria, 5% everything else. And this little tiny dot there would represent the 0.01% of Earth's total biomass being humans. And this is 100 parts per million, 0.01%. Okay, where is this life appear? Well, 86% of it is on land, 1% is in the oceans, 13% is in deep subsurface bacteria. So this transformation of the planet by human activity means that, you know, we're basically calling this the Anthropocene, a new geological era. You know, and how do we define this era? Well, you could look at radiation, you could look at the start of farming, the rise of methane 5,000 years ago. You know, there's all these different possible things. Um, you know, could you call it in the 50s or 45 with the nuclear, first nuclear bombs being dropped? 
Um, you can, the, the, what about the bones of the domestic chicken? They're ubiquitous everywhere across the, the globe. So maybe, you know, the, the fossil record of chicken bones or plastics or something. Farm poultry, 70% of all birds on the planet are chickens, farmed poultry. Only 30% of birds are wild. For mammals, 60% of all mammals on the earth are livestock, mostly cattle and pigs. 36% of all mammals are humans. Only 4% of mammals on the planet are wild animals. This is staggering. You know, when we see these wildlife films, we see flocks of birds, etc. You know, we should just show chickens in these wildlife films. Um, of all the mammals on earth, okay, 96% are livestock and humans. So 60% livestock, 36 humans, that's 96 total. Only 40%, 4%, sorry, are wild mammals. So startling, startling information, startling figures. And here's the bird. 70% of birds are chickens and other poultry on the planet. Only 30% are wild. Okay, and these numbers, that's where we stand today, and these numbers are rapidly changing. The destruction of wild habitat for farming, logging, and development basically has started the sixth mass extinction. We've had a four billion year plus history on the planet. The sixth, about half of all the Earth's animals are thought to have been lost in the last 50 years. And this is accelerating because of climate change, okay? It's stress on habitat from land use and many other, there's many other factors that go into it, but climate change is becoming one of the biggest factors to drive this uh, rate even faster. Okay, um, so if we look at, at the time before humans became farmers and before the industrial revolution began, you can, understand the huge decline. Just one-sixth of wild mammals from mice to elephants remain. Okay, in the oceans, three centuries of whaling, you know, whale oil used to be a huge industry, so whaling was huge. It just left about a fifth of marine mammals in the ocean, so 20% left, 80% gone. Since the rise of human civilization, 83% of wild mammals have been lost, 80% of marine mammals have been lost. Dolphins, things like dolphins. 50% of plants have been lost. 15% of fish has been lost. I thought the fish number would be higher. The num in terms of, um, but you know, 15%. So we're only 100 parts per million, but it's disproportionate. So the scientist said, he says, when he does a puzzle for his daughters, he's usually an elephant next to a giraffe next to a rhino. To give them the kid a more realistic sense of the world, you should have a cow next to a cow next to a cow next to a chicken, right? <laughs> so despite humanity's supremacy or total domination, that's a poor word choice, domination in weight terms, we're puny. Viruses, Combined alone have a combined weight three times that of humans, as do worms. Okay, if you weigh all the worms on the earth, it's three times that of the weight of humans. Fish are 12 times greater than people, fungi 200 times as large. Plants being 82% of all the biomass, that's seven and a half thousand times more biomass than humans, which are that 0.01% or 100 parts per million. So this is, if this was the mass of all humans, three times higher mass is viruses, or three times higher than is worms, 12 times fish, 17 times insects, spiders, and crustacean. Now, if you put all these to scale here, we got 200 times the weight in fungi, 1,200 times more bacteria, 7,500 times more plants. Okay? Yet our impact is enormous on the planet, and our dietary choices have a vast effect on the habitats of animals, plants, and organisms. What people don't realize is that uh, one of the best ways to deal with climate change for you as an individual is uh, your diet. You know, um, being vegetarian or vegan is way, way 
lower footprint on the planet. Okay. Um, now, how did they do this? They took the data from hundreds of studies. They estimated the biomass of each class of organisms, added it all up, and they found that they use carbon as a key measure. So all life contains 550 billion tons of car carbon, or 550 gigatons of carbon. Um, okay, so two, two main things in this paper. Humans are extremely efficient in exploiting natural resources. Humans have culled, in some cases eradicated, wild animals for food or pleasure in virtually all continents. And secondly, the biomass of terrestrial plants overwhelmingly dominates on a global scale. Most of that biomass is in the form of wood. Okay, so now I'm going to go to this study here, okay, where this is taken from. So let's go into a bit more detail in this study. So, you know, in order to understand the structure and dynamics of the biosphere, okay, the part of the, the, the living earth, if you like, the plants and animals and bacteria and archaea, you know, very uh, primitive life forms. Um, in order to get a global view, you have to, it's lacking basically. I mean, here we are in 2018 and we have a paper here and it's, it's, create, it's presenting groundbreaking key information on the biosphere. You think we would have known this stuff a long time ago, but we need to know it in order to know how we're affecting it. So 550 gigatons of carbon of biomass is distributed among all kingdoms of life. How much uh, are human greenhouse gas emissions per year? Okay, you might remember the number about 50 gigatons, but that's of, of CO2 equivalent. That's of CO2, not carbon. So the, the, you need to take carbon is one carbon and two oxygens. Carbon is 12. Oxygens are 16. 16 plus 16 is 32, plus 12 is 44, versus just carbon is 12. That ratio 44 over 12, I believe is 3.667, something like that. So if you take that 50 gigatons of CO2, that would be equivalent to about 13 or 14 gigatons of carbon. So our emissions, human emissions per year are 13 compared to 550 in all of life. So you can see, get an idea of the scale of our fossil fuel emissions. Okay, so the kingdoms of life are concentrated at different locations on the planet. Plants are the dominant kingdom. They're mostly terrestrial. That's the 450 gigatons of carbon. Animals, two gigatons of carbon are mostly marine. Bacteria, 70 gigatons of carbon. And archaea, seven gigatons. They're predominantly located in deep subsurface environments. Okay, so terrestrial biomass, so land biomass, is about two orders of magnitude higher than marine biomass. I find that very uh, interesting. Um, there's a total of estimated six gigatons carbon of marine biota, which is actually double the previously estimated quantity. Um, the global marine biomass period pyramid contains more consumers than producers. It's inverted. Okay, it's an inverse food pyramid, and this is actually quite interesting too. Anyway, the mass of humans is an order of magnitude higher than that of all wild animals combined. Okay, so we're completely dominating this planet. Okay, so let's go into some of the other details. So I always say read the abstract, look at the figures. So basically... You know, this is a fundamental effort of biology to describe the composition of the living world, right? Compare and, you know, describe it in detail and see how it's changing over, over time. Okay, so we need to know the abundance of individual components um, and we need to know, uh, you know, how much carbon is sequestered in, in the biosphere. Okay, so those are a couple factors. Now, I'm going to run out of time in this video, and I do want to cover this paper in great detail. So I'm going to continue. In the meantime, this is my website here, uh, paulbeckwith.net. Um, I post uh, usually a couple times a week, and please consider uh, donating to support my videos. Thank you.